Hello, my friends. I am Humberto Fernandez. And today it is a very special day because today I am here with Alex. Alex is my partner at AIH Realty. And today we're, well, this is the first time that we're going to be doing this podcast that we expect you to like as we're going to be discussing a lot of the new things that are going on in the Riviera Maya. And so first of all, Alex, well, welcome. And I would like to, to you to tell us a little bit more about what is it that we do down there. We're an office, we're a real estate uh, company. We've been there for a number of years now, like 10 years, but we're focused on the investor's market. So just as a little introduction, Alex, why don't you tell us a little bit of what is that we do down there? Sure. Welcome. Uh, thank you for the invite, Beto. We pretty much were a real estate agency. We are partnered now with developers, but we've been working for investors and for clients for more than eight years now, I think. And what we do is we pretty much guide the investors that want to put their interest here in the Riviera Maya, whether it's uh, uh, Tulum or Playa del Carmen, to do a good investment. That's what we do. Uh, we guide investors and we also guide the property owners or developers to do a good business. Okay, great. And yeah, that, that what you're mentioning is actually quite important because from the get go, from the beginning, we have always offered a, a, an end to end service, meaning that we start from when a client calls to the office or comes to the office and they don't know exactly what to expect as for the market of uh, real estate in the Riviera Maya. And then we go all the way with them from making an offer, writing a contract, visiting properties, all the way to the moment in which they title their property and they receive their keys. And now it's been what I look like two years that we decided to expand because as a matter of fact, I am here in, in uh, Canada. I'm in Montreal. We opened the, the Montreal based office, our main office, my, our main branch, which is where Alex is right now, where you are, is in Playa del Carmen. And so we're expanding this, well, this offering, this, this work that we do in order to be able to offer a more extensive service to everybody that comes and decide to choose us as a real estate company, as brokers, in order to ease their way into buying a property in the Riviera Maya. Now, just to get into the subject that we're going to be dealing with today, something important. Again, we're going to be dealing in this, in this podcast about subjects that are current in order to offer you a better perspective of what's going on in the Riviera Maya. So, Alex, you wanted to talk about a little bit about the buyer's market that we're having right now in the Riviera Maya. We're talking about this, and it has to do a lot with certain problems that are some other countries having, maybe Argentina and some other countries, that are actually affecting the market in the Riviera Maya, turning it into a buyer's market. Would you like to, to tell us a little bit more about that? For sure, yeah. What we're seeing, and you are right now in Montreal, right? So the market in Canada and the U.S., it's really different from what we're living right here in the Riviera Maya. Right here after after the quarantine and the COVID and all of that, what happened is people started buying like crazy. But now, uh, after what the Fed started to do, which is a, a cool down the inflation and cool down all these buyers explosion, they raised the interest rates and that's really affected the area. What we've seen is that a lot of travelers are not coming that much as before, right after COVID, as two years ago. And, and buyers are not that many as it was like two years ago. So it's a clear buyer's market. What's going on right now is there's a lot of people selling and, and there's not as many people interested to buy right now, right? It's not something eternal that is going to stay here forever, but it's a good window of opportunity where the buyers have a wide array of options for uh, of properties for you to see and you can easily put an offer and, and you can get good deals right now in the Riviera Maya. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the thing is like, just to mention a very specific case that, that we were discussing actually is when, when a country, okay, let's, let's start to, with the following. The Riviera Maya is an international market. So buyers is not just like the neighbor wanting to buy the, the property next door. It is an international market. So whatever happens in other countries has an effect to on what happens in the Riviera Maya. So for instance, just to, to quote an example that we were discussing, the, the case of Argentina. Uh, I don't know exactly which percentage, but I'm going to say maybe two or three percent of the international buyers, maybe they were Argentinian. But the thing is that right now, Argentina is going on a very heavy crisis. So that means that those potential buyers and also potential tourists, if, if, if you will, they're actually out of the game. We, we're taking out those players from the equation. So that means that the demand is actually going down. So the prices also go, go, go down with it. So for people looking into buying right now in the Riviera Maya, yeah, as you just said, Alex, it's a very, very good moment to just throw in your offers and start fishing around because 
you have more leverage power right now. As for Argentina, it's not an isolated case. There are some other cases in other countries, which ends up with some players going out of the equation and then affecting the, the market in Vira Maya, no? For sure. We know that what's going on in Riviera Maya, we know where we're going. This place is filled with interest from all over the world. What's going on right now is that people don't have money in the world in general. People don't have extra money to travel just like 2021. People had extra money and they wanted to come and they wanted to invest and people were just buying properties because they had the money. Interest rates were really attractive back then and Right now, it's the opposite. So a lot of places in the world are suffering. And I mean markets, real estate markets, but I also mean the buyers. Buyers don't have as much money everywhere in the world. So that's what's going on here. Now, this area is filled with things that interest the buyer, interest that the investors, so to speak, for example, infrastructure deals. We have the Mayan train, we have the Tulum airport, the Jaguar park, for example, and lots of things that this area is giving to investors that probably cannot be reflected right now because the demand is not right there right now, but it's coming. So if you know that you have a product that you have a place that is going somewhere and the fundamentals of that place are interesting, sort of, a, for example, this infrastructure thing and the demand is there for Tulum and Playa del Carmen, it's a good time to invest right now because mm -hmm. think, things are low. That's when investors buy, right? So what we've seen in the last two, pretty much in the last year, 2023 and, and 2024, have been really slow years. Investors' expectations that property owners weren't met, you know? People were expecting, the property owners were expecting a 9% return of investment, 10%, 12% return of investment. And it was hardly met. People were hardly making five or six percent, hardly, you know, and, and, and some people were not making any money at all. They were struggling to pay bills on their property and it was costing them money to have a property here in the Riviera Maya, where the expectation when they, they purchased that property was that property is going to make me money. Right. So uh, a lot of property owners were suffering through that time, which is already a window of two years. Right. Uh, for a lot of the educated investors, a lot of people would say, you know, two years is nothing. I could I could have the resilience to survive that. It's not a big deal. But a lot of people uh, uh, were freaking out last year and they're still freaking out just because a, a few months their properties are not being rented. So what we've seen is a lot of property owners are saying, you know what, I'm going to let this property go. I'm going to sell it. It doesn't matter if I'm not making any money. And that's a, an amazing opportunity. Why? Because next year. Actually, late this year, late 2024 and 2025 look really good for the real estate market here in Tulum. So it's a great opportunity. You have buyers willing to give you their apartment for not a lot of money, for good deals, and, and you have a good future coming for, for this area. Absolutely. No, and I think you're pointing out a couple of interesting things. First, I would like just to, to say something. The Riviera Maya is big, has always been big. It was big when there was no infrastructure. I mean, tourists were going to Tulum and Playa del Carmen when both of those places were nothing but the fishermen villages. I mean, they are attractive places from the get go. And also, I think what you're saying is very important to point out the fluctuations of the market. And that's something that, that you as an investor, you need to be educated into. Because again, the fact that, that markets are slow or fast, it's, it's not a, a matter of this is a bad investment. It's more about the timing of where when to invest. So whenever the market is slowing, or in this case, what you're mentioning, that the rentals market is slow, that's, that's exactly the kind of pressure that buyers need to get into the market at better places, at better prices. That's kind of the cue, no? I mean, for instance, they, they, this guy, Robert Kiyosaki, he would always go to, to markets in crisis, you know, after the hurricane and, and places that are facing some sort of crisis because that's the moment. So if when you arrive, the things are not good, it not, not, does not necessarily mean that they're never going to be good again. And that brings me to, to the next thing that we wanted to discuss and has to do with the infrastructure. So we are looking at a market that right now is facing some sort of uh, crisis. I wouldn't say crisis, but that is a little bit slow. However, we are able to see what's coming on. We're able to see what's coming on with the Mayan train, with the airport, with the plazas being built. For instance, this week I've been hearing news about new flights coming, for instance, from Europe, direct flights all the way to Tulum. And all of them, they're preparing these new routes in order to satisfy the demand for the next uh, high season, which is December. And so the thing is that if you decide to acquire a property like right now, when the market is favorable for the buyer, 
it's just a matter of waiting a little bit and you will get a very nice return on investment when the, when the market matures or, or when the market rebounds. And that's about the thing that, that makes it interesting. And also keeping in mind that the real estate investing is not necessarily an immediate market. It's not like you buy it today and you're going to make money tomorrow. These require certain patience. These are big investments. So a couple of months and even a couple of years do not determine the reality of your investment, because whether or not, for instance, whether or not the rents are a little bit slow or whatever, your property is still appraising, it's still gaining value. So nothing is lost really. But yeah, if you're looking to buying right now, the market is on your side. I think that's that's the big thing, no? And as for infrastructure, what do you think? How do you picture Tulum, like, like for instance, this December, the next high season, when all of this infrastructure is in place? Well, things happen really quickly in Tulum. People can see when they come for vacation and they haven't been here for a few months and then they come back and it's like things are, are happening rather quickly. Uh, having an international airport at, at a destination, what happens is that you slowly see how that destination starts to get filled, right? It's not like you have a, an airport open at whatever city and then the, the day after everything is full, right? But what you can see throughout the months or years is that destination starts picking up momentum and that's what's going to happen with Loom now. The other thing that you have is the Mayan train, which is something really interesting with uh, connected to the airport, you know? So along with the airport, that's mm -hmm. going to create Uh, an amazing flow of, of tourists, local and international, right? You have people that are really interested in going to Merida, for example. You have people that are really interested in going mm -hmm. to Chiapas and, and places like that, right? And a lot of times they don't come to Riviera Maya, but now it's rather affordable and easy to connect, right? Mm -hmm. Also for locals. Now you can mm -hmm. just pay 250 pesos and be in Tulum or Playa del Carmen within two hours where it was a lot more expensive and it was many more hours of commute, right? So that's going to create a different kind of destination for sure, in my opinion. What I mm -hmm. think is going to happen to Tulum is, is the next Cancun in the next decade. That's the way I see it. And the layout of Tulum as a city is really well planned. And a lot of people don't see it. You know, a lot of people go like it's, you know, it looks like a mess a lot of times. Right. But it's it's because it's a growing uh, city, you know, and it's very well planned. So everything is laid out for it to be the next Cancun in the next decade. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. No. Yeah. And actually the, the, how, how Tulum is being planned, I think it's a, it's a subject of its own that we can very much discuss if you wish next week, because, yeah, the way Tulum is being planned is actually actually uh, future proof they're being deciding it's very very well calculated how the growth of the city should be taking place and yeah in the in the long run absolutely it's going to become a major vibrant city in the caribbean but right now it's like imagine investing in cancun in the 70s i don't think there's one person alive that wouldn't would not taken that opportunity but yeah it, it's easy to consider good investments in retrospective Once the, the, the market is mature, it's easy to say, oh, I should have. Yeah. But okay, Tulum is heading there. And again, I, that's something that I always like to say. It's not because we, either of us, Alex, were saying it. It has to do with, there's a lot of, of players, a lot of factors getting into place. You have the government pushing in. You have new hotels going in. You have new parks going in. You have like the Nickelodeon. And there are new things coming in. So there are major investors with their eyes in that destination. So by you acquiring a studio, a one bedroom, something at your own scale, because at the end, we cannot all build hotels. If, if we invest at our own scale, we're going to be part of that game. And yeah, in this moment when we have fluctuations in the market, when when it's, it's, it's favorable for buyers, well, this is the moment to go. I, I believe that that summarizes it a little bit. And yeah, with a very promising future with a lot of infrastructure coming in. Would you agree, Alex? Yeah, that's exactly the case. When the conversation was agreed upon, making a conversation, a podcast right here with you, I think it's, the idea was like, let's, let's touch on something that is really important right now that a lot of people are not touching mm -hmm. it right now because a lot of agents or brokers in the area, the, the idea mm -hmm. of selling is everything is amazing in Tulum and, and you can get a 12% mm -hmm. return of investment a year. And, and a lot of times mm -hmm. it's not markets fluctuate and that doesn't mm -hmm. happen every yeah. single day of the year of, of any year where you want to buy you know right now it's not the case mm -hmm. but that's a good thing that means there's a lot of people willing to sell you at a good at a good deal right now oh yeah that's absolutely right i mean salesmen will tell you anything but at the, at the end of the day we're dealing with educated investors and uh, if you want to learn more you can always contact us that's the whole purpose of what we're doing to analyze what is happening in the riviera maya 
from a more objective perspective. And actually, that's the whole goal of doing this podcast, trying to share with, with the people that watches us all some, some, some truths about the Riviera Maya and yeah. help, help those investors to make more informed decisions. Perfecto. There are good things and bad things. And, and that's what we're going to be discussing here. Sorry to interrupt, but the thing is, I'm yep. sure people tell you, like, you're going to be my eyes over there, Humberto. Yeah. And, and a lot of times your eyes are telling you things that are not happening. You know, mm -hmm. like your eyes are saying, yeah, yeah, buy this property and it's going to give you 12% return of investment. And honestly, it's not the case. However, it's not bad news. If you are well assisted by your agent, you, you can make a, a much mm -hmm. better decision with much better expectations. Uh, a lot of the phone calls that we get at the office from owners wanting to sell, the reason why they're selling is because they weren't properly assisted. You know what I mean? They were given a, an expectation that wasn't quite the reality of what was going on. You know, a lot of times an agent can tell or, or, or at least, yeah, or at least it was not accurate for this year now. No, no, no because, for sure. yeah, exactly. I mean, for the reality ago, that we're, we're living. We've seen ROIs of 16. Uh, I mean, we have clients that have reported ROIs of 18% per year in the rental incomes, which is fantastic. For but sure. Yes, again, the, the market goes like this. And that's something that we see even within one year. I mean, you have your, your rental property and it's going to rent better in January, February than in September. And that's things that, that you need to learn to understand the investment that you're making. Absolutely. For sure. So that's what we'll try to do as good as we can to be your eyes right here and, and to tell you exactly what's going on. A lot of times it's going to be good news. A lot of times it's not going to be as great news, but we'll do it as best as possible. And that's our goal. So my friends and Alex, I think it's going to be all for, for today. And so we hope to see you next uh, week. And Alex, thank you so much for your insights. And well, to the next one. Thank you, Beto. Have a good day.